Humans are really bad at naming things. We call fishes dogs, rats pigs, spawns of Satan chihuahuas and YouTubers functioning members of society. Ever since we decided to start naming things, there's always been a few mistakes here and there because of mistranslations, the telephone game or because somebody forgot to pay attention in geography class. So without further ado, here are some of history's biggest misnomers. First we have Greenland. If you look closely at a map, you can probably notice a distinct lack of green anywhere near Greenland. Now you might argue and say that Greenland does have a few trees here and there, but then again, America has a lot of snow. But if I call it a white nation, then suddenly I'm racist. The name Greenland was created in the year 986. Erik Thorvaldsen was an Icelandic Viking who was born around 950. He's also called Erik the Red because he had red hair. I'm kind of seeing a pattern here. As the story goes, around 982, Erik gave some of his stuff to a neighbor. But when he came back for them, the neighbor refused to give them to him. So he did what any normal person would do and kill the neighbor's two sons. Stealing, mass murder. Seems pretty fair to me. For doing that, Erik was exiled from Iceland and he had to find a new place to live. So in 982, he discovered Greenland and spent some time there. He felt a little lonely though, but nobody was going to leave that barren cold wasteland to live in an even colder and barrener one. So he went back to Iceland. Oh hey Erik, what have you been up to? Listen dude, I found this place. It's got everything you need. Trees, animals, everything you want. I call it Greenland. You want to come with me? Hmm. How do I know you're not lying? Come on, man. Would I ever do something that bad? You killed two people. Yes, but I didn't lie about it. Yeah, fair enough. I'll come with you. Here we are. I hope you enjoy your stay. This is Greenland. Yep. So I'm just stuck here now. Yep. By the way, do you have a pen and paper? I just discovered this new place. It's got trees and animals. I call it Greenland. Huh? Maybe we should go there. Eventually, enough people started living in Greenland, willingly and unwillingly, and the name stayed. Now, if I asked you what this is, you'd probably say it's pepper. If I asked you what this is, you'd probably say it's a chili pepper, even though one looks like the fossilized version of the other. Like a lot of history's problems, it's all because of Christopher Columbus. In the 1400s, pepper came from India, and it was very valuable. So when Columbus went to India, he expected to find some pepper so he could make a lot of money. But instead, all he found were chilies. Well, they're both spicy, and people in Europe probably can't tell the difference. So, hey, are those real peppers? Uh, yeah, yes, they are real and very expensive. Okay, I'll take all of them. Columbus might not have been the best at differentiating between minorities. But he sure as hell wasn't going to pass up on an opportunity to make more money, often by any means possible. So people started calling them peppers in the name stayed. And that's why you can pepper peppers, pepper peppers with peppers and peppers and have a tasty meal instead of a pile of dust. Our next misnomer is this little place in Mexico called the Yucatan region. Now there's multiple stories about how this name came about, but the others are kind of boring and I need content, so here we go. The name came about when soldiers from the Spanish Empire discovered the region. They met some of the Mayan people who were already living there and asked them what they call their land. The Mayans replied with something that I'm not even going to try pronouncing, which means I don't know what you're saying. The Spanish thought that that was the name of the place and started calling it that. Eventually this became Yucatan, and that's what it's called today. By the way, thanks for helping me. What's your name? I don't understand you. Nice to meet you. I don't understand you. No, listen. I don't understand you. Yeah, yeah, that's your name. I get it. I don't understand you man. How many times should I tell you? You said two things there. Is that like your full name or how does this work? God damn it. There's two more theories about how this name came about. One of them says that the place was named after the yuca plant that grows there, while the other one says that Yucatan is just what the people call themselves, which is both boring and poorly sourced. Nobody really knows which story is actually true though, but this is probably the best theory. Now for a rapid fire round. The Hundred Year War and the Thousand Day War both lasted for more than that, and the Thousand Island Archipelago has way more islands than that. But then again, the 1,864 Island Archipelago just doesn't have the same ring to it. Also, there's a bridge in Paris called the Pont Neuf, which means new bridge in French. It was pretty new when it was built, but that was in 1607, and since then it's gotten pretty old. But the name still stayed. It's the same with New York, New Jersey, Newfoundland, New Caledonia, New Hampshire. Wow, we are really bad at this, aren't we? Lastly,
French fries probably didn't come from France. According to some stories, they were first made in Belgium, but the Belgians spoke French, so people just thought they came from France. Some French people might argue that French fries really are French, but French horns are actually German and French dressing is American. So I'm not sure I really trust you on this one, baguette boy. So yeah, those are some historical misnomers. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment, and check out some other videos in the description. I'll see you guys later.